Before we get started, I'd like to thank GetUpPV for sponsoring this video. In the previous video, we discussed how to set our PixHawk up. And in this video, we're going to cover the basics to get firmware loaded, do all of our calibration and tuning, and ultimately get PixHawk with this QAV500 in the air. And by in the air, I'm talking about just a low altitude hover here in the garage so that we can see how everything performs. And then in an upcoming video, we'll cover a lot of the tuning that I normally like to do to get the QAV500 super stable and ready for autonomous flight. My cable is connected to the USB side port on the PixHawk. And let me just mention a note about this power module. I introduced one in the previous video to be able to run 6S LiPo with PixHawk. This is actually a different one that I ordered at the same time and it's the Creus 6 to 28 volt power module. I like it because of the heat shrink tubing. It supports a little bit higher voltage. So that's what we're going to go with. I'll put a link to the product below just in case you guys want to check it out. And I'll go ahead and connect the other end of the cable to my MacBook. You can hear the little PixHawk jingle. You can see our little toggle switch LED blinking. And let me just add that right now we're getting power, 5 volts to the PixHawk from the USB, and we do not have our LiPo battery connected. Now I've fired up Mission Planner. I actually run Windows using Parallels on my Mac. There is another way to do this setup. You could use APM Planner, which runs natively on a Mac as well as a PC. The only thing that I found is when we get to the compass calibration, the sequence to do that within Mission Planner to me is a lot more robust than within APM Planner. So that's why I'm using Mission Planner. We're going to go to Initial Setup, and then in the left tab we'll see Install Firmware, and we'll be installing APM Copter, in this case it's version 3.2, onto our PixSock. So we'll go ahead and click Yes and you'll see that it's downloading. What it asks us now to do is unplug the board, then press OK and plug it back in. So I'm going to unplug the board here. Then in Mission Planner, I'll click OK. And then what we'll do is we'll plug the PixHawk back in. Now you can see that it's programming this little green progress bar going across the screen. And let me add a side note because you might come into situations where your firmware upload will fail. I've had that happen to me multiple times and in some cases I've had to restart Mission Planner and other cases I've had to restart my computer altogether. So just keep that in mind. Don't get frustrated if that happens because sooner or later it will. So that's the tone you'll hear when the firmware is done uploading. Mission Planner will tell you to wait for that tone before clicking OK. We'll go ahead and do that. And now we will be using this for the first time, so we will do a compass calibration. I'll hit OK. Now let me also mention that there is a wizard option, and that will actually take you step by step through each of the things we're about to cover. Definitely something to consider if you're one of those people that like to be guided through the entire process. And next, let's go ahead and connect to our board. You can see that I'm on COM 13. We wanna be at 115, 200 baud, and I'll click connect. Now keep in mind that when doing the firmware load, you're not connected this way. This is not something you wanna do until after your firmware is loaded. So we'll go ahead and connect. Looking at the flight data screen, you can see that we're connected. Now we haven't done any sort of calibration, but GPS gets our location and you can see the various parameters over here. And the next thing we'll do is we'll go back to the initial setup screen. Under mandatory hardware, we're going to step through the frame type. Now we want to do a quad X and then we'll follow up with the accelerometer calibration. This is pretty straightforward, but what we'll do is I'll click calibrate accelerometer and then what it will ask is place vehicle level and press any key. So we're level, I'll go ahead and hit the space bar, place vehicle on its left side. Now, this is the front pointing away from us. So we're on the left side now, right side. 
nose down, nose up, and then I'll just hold it on its back, keep it nice and stable, space bar. Our accelerometer calibration is successful. Okay, moving on to my nemesis, the compass calibration. Now, this is something that I highly, highly recommend that you have a 3DR radio to do. I've done this too many times with a cable and it's just a nightmare. I really wish this process were as easy as with the NASA, but there's method to the madness. So what we're going to do is now disconnect this and use our 3DR radio to do this calibration. So what I've done is disconnected this from the PixHawk, hooked it up to the 3DR radio that's going to be on the ground, running the other end into my MacBook, and now what we'll need to do is power up the QAV500 with the LiPo battery. And you'll notice now with the QAV500 powered up, we have a constant green LED on the multi-rotor, as well as a constant green LED on the radio connected to our ground station. The next thing we'll do is we'll make connection with Mission Planner. We'll be on a different COM port. I'm COM 18. Now, just a word of caution, you don't want to be on 115.2 like you are when you're direct connected to the PixHawk. This has a slower communication rate, and we're going to be at 57600. I'll click Connect. You can see a bunch of parameters being loaded over the air. Now we're back to compass calibration using the 3DR radios and what we'll do is we'll select PixHawk PX4. It asks me is the firmware version greater than APM Copter 3.01, which it is. Select yes. We also want to make sure that enable is checked as well as auto declination. Those will be checked normally by default. Now before I actually do the live calibration, this YouTube example will take you to a great video by Randy McKay that demonstrates how to do the compass calibration. But what I've found lately with newer versions of Mission Planner and why I recommended us using Mission Planner over APM Planner is there is a nice user interface that shows you now kind of the status of your calibration. And so let's go ahead and dive into that. I'll click live calibration. It tells me to click OK and start moving the autopilot around. So I'll click OK. We have live calibration going on in Mission Planner. This is due north for me. What I found to be a relatively easy and reliable way to ensure a good compass calibration. So I'm going to go ahead and slowly rotate on the pitch axis. I'll do that two times. And this is actually recommended by the little dialogue inside of Mission Planner. Okay, and then I'll rotate 90 degrees and rotate two times around the roll axis. And you can hear that now our compass calibration is complete. And before we move on to radio calibration, I cannot reiterate enough. I found that process to work fairly consistency. And this is coming from a guy who sat there and spun the multi-rotor in every which way for three to five minutes and still haven't been able to get the calibration. So that tip that shows up within Mission Planner is a good one and I highly recommend following that process. So let's go ahead and look at radio calibration now. So we are connected via S-Bus. Our channels are aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. I've done plenty of videos that show how to bind and set that up. So now we have a good bind between our X8R receiver and our Tyrannus. So let's go ahead and check that our sticks are moving within Mission Planner, and they are. So what we'll do next is here we'll click Calibrate Radio and we're going to move all of our sticks to their endpoints. No props on, definitely no props on. Okay, so throttles all the way up, then down, rudder all the way down, all the way up. We'll go elevator, down. Now, this is the tricky thing that I wanna mention. You see as I go down, this actually moves the bar down. We actually want the inverse of that. As we go down, you know that we wanna pitch back, our nose will go up. And so we want this, when I move down, the green to go up. So we'll go ahead and address that in a minute. Let's check our roll to the left, roll to the right. So we got our endpoints there. Everything looked okay except our elevator. 
So what I'll do is I'll go to the next screen down to channel two, which is our elevator channel. And then we'll go over to direction. I'll go ahead and hit enter. You can see that it inverted it and I'll just click page and hold it to go back once. Now we're back at our screen and let's take a look in Mission Planner to see what that did. Okay, now I'll go ahead and pull down. Yep, you'll see that green slider go up, which is exactly what we want. So we've set all of our endpoints. Go ahead and click down here where it says click when done. Hit OK. And now you can see it saved each of the endpoint values for those four channels. Okay, lastly, let's move down to flight modes. Now, you'll see that normally you have your input on channel five. And what I always do with PixHawk when setting up a new rig is I'll default to stabilize mode. So you'll see all these flight modes are unstabilized. I don't have anything configured for channel five. So you can see that it just defaults to flight mode four, which is currently stabilized. And we'll save that configuration for a future video. Okay, so let's just do a quick arm and see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and push this toggle. Then I'll go ahead and arm with my Tyrannus. Now, if your compass calibration failed, then you won't be able to do this. So let's see. We hear that long beep. And sounds good. So let's put the props on and just give this a quick indoor test. Okay, here's our moment of truth. I've gone ahead and pressed the toggle switch just so now that we can arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm it. And what I normally like to do is just give it a little nudge in each direction to make sure that, you know, it's going the way I want it to go. So let's go ahead and get it in the air. We're in stabilized mode. Flies fairly well. Not a bad garage maiden in stabilized mode. One thing we'll be doing is definitely working on the gains. This thing was a little too responsive. It felt a bit squirrely in the air, but in an upcoming video, we're going to dial all of that in, get it super stable, locked in, and then get on to the, some of the autonomous features of the PixHawk. It may seem like we covered a lot in this video, and we did, but one of the most important things with PixHawk is just that compass calibration. Can't stress that enough. And please don't feel intimidated by PixHawk. Once you do a few setups and calibrations, you're gonna feel right at home with it. Definitely looking forward to the next video where we do some more fine tuning, some autonomous mission work. But until then, please feel free to post any questions or comments below. Thank you for the conversation that has been going on so far. Definitely learning a lot from you guys and I hope you are as well from me. A special thanks to GetFPV for sponsoring this video. And until next time, thanks for watching.